The scripture of tonight is Revelation chapter 1 verses 13 to 20. Chapter 1 verses 13 through 20. And in the middle of the lampstands I saw one like a son of man, clothed in a robe reaching to the feet, and girded across his chest with a golden sash. His head and his hair were white like white wool, like snow, and his eyes were like a flame of fire. His feet were like burnished bronze when it has been made to glow in a furnace, and his voice was like the sound of many waters. In his right hand he held seven stars, and out of his mouth came a sharp two-edged sword, and his face was like the sun shining in its strength. When I saw him, I fell at his, fi I fell at his feet like a dead man, and he placed his right hand on me, saying, Do not be afraid, I am the first and the last and the living one, and I was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore, and I have the keys of death and the Hades. Therefore, write the things which you have seen, and the, which, the things which are, and the things which will take place after things, things. This is the fifth lecture on Revelation. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, and the more than 4,600 brain churches in the United States of America, United Kingdom, Canada, Peru, Honduras, Bolivia, El Salvador, Argentina, Germany, France, Russia, Belgium, the Netherlands, China, Japan, Pakistan, Nepal, Indonesia, the Philippines, Taiwan, India, Mongolia, Egypt, Israel, Kenya, Uganda, Congo, Burundi, Rwanda, Tanzania, Nigeria, Swaziland, South Africa, Botswana, Cote d'Ivoire, and other countries, and brain churches and local sanctuaries in Korea and members who are attending this service through satellite and on the internet and all the TV viewers. There are some people who insist that they met the Lord with their spiritual eyes opened either in their dreams or in their visions. And most of them have something in common. They say the Lord looks very full of overflowing love and affection. Well, there are no words in our vocabulary that can easily describe the Lord's appearance. Even though, what the most of the people see from the Lord is a look of His human nature rather than a look of His splendid glory in heaven. When the Lord shows His divine nature, His authority and dignity are beyond description. If a person were unsanctified, he would not even dare to look at His face. If the Lord shows His current appearance in His splendid glory as it is, people would not be able to look at Him face to face because of the intensely bright light. Therefore, what most of the people saw in their dreams or in their vision was the look of His human appearance, which was possible for them to see because the Lord reduced the brightness of His light. Since His light is too bright, we cannot see His face. All, the, only, the only thing we can see is His light. We cannot see His face. So, not anyone can see His face even in heaven. That is written in Hebrews. If you are not sanctified, if you are not come to Spirit and the whole Spirit, you will not be able to see our Lord face to face in heaven. Since His light is too bright, you cannot see Him unless you come into spirit or whole spirit. Once you come into spirit and whole spirit, your light is bright too. That's why you can see Him. Also in tonight's scripture, in the description of the Lord's appearance, that Apostle John saw in his vision. From the verse 13 to 16, he says, And in the middle of the lampstands I saw one like a son of man, clothed in the robe reaching to the feet, and girded across his chest with the golden sash. His head and his hair were white like white wool like snow, and his eyes were like a flame of fire. His feet were like burnished bronze when it has been made to glow in the furnace, and his voice was like the sound of many waters. In his right hand he held seven stars, and out of his mouth came a sharp two-edged sword, and his face was like the sun shining in its strength. 
Apostle John wasn't seeing the Lord with his physical eyes. What he was seeing is the Lord in a vision with his spiritual eyes opened. It is not like that we will see the Lord face to face in heaven. Since he himself didn't see the Lord's actual being with his bare eyes, he didn't describe the Lord as a son of man, but as like a son of man. Now, John is seeing one who was like a son of man, the Lord, in the middle of the lampstands. As I explained in the last lecture, a lampstand refers to a church. And, just as Colossians 1.18 says, He is also head of the body, the church. And He is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, so that He Himself will come to have first place in everything. The Bible says, the Lord is head of the church. He is head of the body, the church, okay? He is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead. Since the obedience of Adam, he was kicked out from the Garden of Eden. He became a man of flesh, not the man of spirit, okay? So, he used to be a living being, but he became a dead man. Even though you're breathing, you're a dead man because your spirit is dead. When your spirit is dead, you're a dead man. So that he himself will come to have first place in everything. So he was the firstborn from the dead. He was the first fruit of the dead, okay? Therefore, one like a son of man in the middle of the millennium stands means that the Lord is the head of the church and He moves amongst the churches as though closely watching over them. And He gives intercessory prayers so that all the churches may be guided in the will of Father God. But in these days, there are more and more churches where the Lord no longer moves about. In other words, the Lord is no longer with them. The church that has put out the fire of prayers, the church that has been divided into many factions that are in conflict, the church that goes against the will of Father God as if a blind man led another blind man, and the church where the works of the Holy Spirit have become instinct. In these churches, the Lord is not able to be with them any longer. A blind man cannot lead a blind man. But some people, even though they see the power of God manifested in this church, even though they see the many miracles and wonders happen in the overseas crusades, even though many people around the world are touched by the message that I deliver, some people still say, that I borrow the power from the ghost and enemy devil. They blaspheme the Holy Spirit. How can they say so? Even someone prays in the name of Jesus Christ. If the enemy devil has that kind of power, Many men of flesh will worship them. But all the fathers of faith and apostles and disciples and all Stephen and Philip, they were the ones who manifested the power of God. But the enemy devil didn't manifest the power of God. But they still say, this is the works of the enemy devil. How can such a devil do such a job? 
good things like healing people from their diseases. They blasphemed the Holy Spirit like this. How dare could they do this? They should not do that anymore. Many pastors, you should not do that. In the upcoming Revelation lectures about the seven churches, I will give you a detailed explanation about what churches fall into each of the seven churches' types. Now, John saw the Lord clothed in a robe reaching to the feet. When we go to heaven, we will put on a linen robe. However, the color and the shape of the robe for each person is different according to how much they cultivated their heart into spirit and the measure of their reward. In case of ladies, the length of their hair is also different. The length of a lady who went into the spirit and the lady who went into the whole spirit is different. If you go to, if you come into the whole spirit, your uh, length of your hair will come down to the uh, waist. If you do not come to the spirit, then uh, your hair will grow just to cover your neck. So that is this is this is how it's different, okay? By the way, John saw his robe was reaching to the feet, which means to be full of grace. If you would think of the days of Roman Empire, or if you think of the movies about the Roman Empire, some people wearing a robe and reaching to the feet, right? The Lord always pours His grace onto us so that we can win the victory. John said, the Lord girded across his chest with a golden sash. It means his faith is like gold, so that there is no change, and the heart is steadfast and perfect. The Lord was obedient to Father God with all his mind, heart, will, and life, to the point of death. That's why Father God put on the Lord with an unchanging golden sash across His chest, which symbolizes His heart. John also said, His head and His hair were white, like white wool, like snow. To describe the color of the Lord's hair, He compared the color with white, wool, and snow, which were the whitest things of His days. It was the color of pure white. The white color means to be pure and clean without blemish. In other words, the perfect sanctification and goodness. Therefore, comparing the Lord's color with white wool and white snow symbolizes that the Lord is so perfect that He has no trace of evil and that He stands in the perfect goodness. Next, John said that His eyes were like a flame of fire. But don't take it wrong. You should not think the Lord's eyes are scary only because His eyes are like a flame of fire, all right? The reason that Apostle John said the Lord's eyes are like a flame of fire is that His eyes shine brilliantly and it makes things feel warm. But at the same time, His eyes are like a flame of fire that scorches all sin and evil. They also precisely discern the truth from the untruth. There is no deception or lie that can be unnoticed before the eyes of the Lord. No one can escape from the eyes of the Lord. Everything is clearly revealed before His eyes. Actually, sinners fear the Lord. They cannot meet with the Lord. They cannot even stand before the Lord face to face. Only those who are qualified as a bride, who can meet with the Lord, can be put on, put into an arm of, of the Lord, and only those can look into the warm eyes of the Lord. 
Now, in the beginning of the verse 15, John said, His feet were like burnished bronze when it has been made to glow in the furnace. Dear brothers and sisters, one of the dirtiest parts of a human body is the foot. There is a scene in Genesis Uh, there, there is a scene in Exodus chapter 3, verse 5, that he said, Do not come near here. Remove your sandals from your feet, for the place on which you are standing is holy ground. When God told Moses to remove his sandals from his feet, there was a spiritual meaning. Removing sandals from feet, which are the dirtiest in humans' body, means removing evil heart and deeds in order to come before God. But the feet of the Lord are not dirty like the feet of normal people. John said, the Lord's feet were like burnished bronze when it has made to glow in a furnace. The burnished bronze means something that is so pure it is without any blemish or flaw. Generally, when the metal is refined in a furnace, any impurities in the metal are burned, and the metal becomes purer and purer. Likewise, human beings become clean and pure as much as they get rid of evil through refinement. When you're under refinement, If you try to get rid of evil in your heart, then you will become clean and pure in your heart. Whenever you find evil in your heart, you will get rid of it again and again. Then you will be sanctified in, eventually without any evil. Let's say, I'm, I'm not sure what it is. <clears throat> Can you see? Can you see the color? Let's say there is a water in the black color, a dirty water. If you put clean water in it, the water of truth, let's say our heart is dirty. If you put water of truth, clean water, the dirty water will be washed out. Even though it's dirty water, if you put clean water in it over and over again, then it will be changed, it will be cleansed, and it will become pure water. Then eventually, you will come to have clean heart. However dark, I mean, you know, whatever dark heart you may have, if you wash it with the clean water, the word of a Father God, then you will become a clean heart that is resembling our Lord's heart and our Father God's heart. Just do it, just for a year. Then, nobody cannot be sanctified. There is no one who cannot be sanctified. Is it too, too long? Just think about it. You should not have any kind of evil left in your heart. But why do you still have evil left in your heart? That's because you don't have any intention to obey. You don't get rid of the lust of the eyes, lust of the body. And the boastfulness of your life, no matter how long you fast and how long hours you pray, if you do not cut off from the lust of the eyes and your body and flesh, you cannot be clean. You have to put clean water inside the glass which contains dirty water. But if you put dirty water again inside that glass, the water will be still dirty. It becomes clean, right? But if you put dirty water in it, it cannot be cleansed. It's the same. 
여러분들이 육신이 좀 안목이죠. 이 생이잖아. 이걸 끊어버려. 또 나오네요. 잘 보세요. 저렇게 저렇게 검은 물이. Now you can see, right? If you put clean water like that, it will be clean. But if you put dirty again, it becomes dirty again. It's, it's useless if you put dirty water inside. If you, if you truly love our Father God, if you truly live by the Word and live in the light, you have to cut off from the lust of the eyes and lust of the flesh. Then you can be sanctified. But if you, you know, look at the things that which you cannot see through the movie or internet, or if you try to listen, if you try to hear, if you try to see, if you try to say, you cannot be sanctified. That's why, no matter how long years have passed, you cannot be sanctified. But you get rid of it. You make a determination and get rid of it. And cut off from the untruths. And try, to get rid, try, try hard to get rid of evil left in your heart. Then you will be sanctified. In a year you will be sanctified. When you get rid of evil, like this, then you will not have any idea of the flesh. All the thoughts of the flesh will be gone. Since you have the sanctified heart, if you have dirty heart, you will have a thought of the flesh, and then you will judge and condemn. But once your heart is sanctified, you will get rid of every thought of the flesh, and whatever you think is the truth and the spirit, that you will not speak if it's not truth. Since your heart is spirit, all you can speak is the spirit and goodness. So once you become sanctified, there is no conflict inside your heart. There is no struggling against the enemy devil and Satan. Then your face will shine. Since you are living in the Spirit, you will make a communication with our Father God and your heart will be filled with the fullness of the Holy Spirit all the time. And you will be healthy and you will not come across with any kinds of accidents or disasters. The Lord didn't have any sin originally. He came down to this earth in flesh and experienced joy and grief along with anger and pleasure. He himself went under the process of human cultivation. Therefore, that the Lord's feet were like burnished bronze when it has been made to glow in a furnace means that the Lord was perfect, not leaving room for any accusation. When he underwent human cultivation like a normal human, he experienced everything that other humans do and won the perfect victory by faith. I hope that you too have feet that are always clean and bright like the Lord's feet. Do not put your feet into a place which is not proper. Not only your feet, but also your eyes, ears, lips, mind, and heart should not be put into a place which is not clean. In the later part of the verse 15, John said, His voice was like the sound of many waters. I myself had heard God's voice many times. The voice is so clean, pure, and beautiful, yet it's resounding and magnificent. If you hear the voice of a Father God, you will never forget the voice. You will not forget even though you get older and older. The voice of the Lord is similar, yet John is comparing his voice with the sound of many waters. 
The reason he compared his voice with the sound of many waters is that the water is the word itself coming out from the Lord's lips. Water cleanses things, and it is necessary for almost every living thing. Likewise, the, the devil in our hearts can be cleansed and made clean by the word of the Lord. If you go to uh, many famous falls, the sound of the water falling to the ground can be heard from many miles away. Just think about it, you hear that sound from a very close distance. It's very magnificent. And you have to uh, ride on a helicopter to see such uh, you know, waterfalls. But you know, nowadays we have microphones. But in John's days, they didn't have uh, such a system. Uh, they, I mean, uh, John might have compared it with the thunder, but it, it's a little bit scary, right? So that's why he compared the Lord's voice with the sound of waters. The devil in our hearts can be cleansed and made clean by the word of the Lord. Just as the first Peter 1.23 says, For you have been born again not of seed which is perishable, but imperishable, that is, through the living and enduring word of God. We can reach the eternal life by being born again through the word of God. Therefore, the word of God or the word of the Lord is absolutely necessary to gain eternal life. You must bear in mind that you cannot live without the Word of God as long as you are a child of God, just as fish cannot live without water. And if you love and long for the Word of God, you will feel cleansed and refreshed in your heart when you listen to the Word of God, just as thirsty man drinks cold water. And you must have such lips, the lips that speak words that will refresh others, make others feel happy and comfortable, and become life to others. Your lips must speak these words. Now, the verse 16 says, In hand he held seven stars, and out of his mouth came a sharp two-edged sword. And his face was like the sun, shining in its strength. John said, in his right hand, he held seven stars. Generally, people's right hand is stronger, than, stronger and more powerful than the left one. Therefore, the right hand symbolizes might and strength. Also, a star refers to a man. In Genesis chapter 15, verse 5, it says, Now look toward the heavens and count the stars, if you are able to count them. And he said to him, So shall your descendants be. God compares Abraham's descendants to the numbers of stars. Sometimes, when a great man is born or dies, people say that a new star appears or disappears in the sky. They also use a star to symbolize a man. I believe that, you know, not many fleshly people can understand this by their own knowledge. But the members of this church have witnessed it many times. When the Lord was born, the Magi came to Jerusalem following the star from the east. How can human knowledge and the modern science can explain this? 
This is the happening in the spiritual realm. The time is coming for me to speak these things of the spiritual realm. Then you will feel very happy because you can hear freely the things in the spiritual world. Since the fleshly people cannot understand and not to believe it, even though you witnessed it, I cannot speak freely. Therefore, the seven stars, as mentioned in the verse 20, refer to the angels of seven churches, in other words, the shepherds of the seven churches. And that the Lord held the seven stars means that God holds the churches and the servants that He Himself built and chose by His power. He shows the proof that He guarantees them and He is with them, and God Himself refines them. Just as written in Matthew chapter 16, verse 18, I also say to you that you are Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not overpower it. The enemy devil and Satan cannot overpower the church and the servant that he himself built and chose. And the church and the servant that God holds will become a standard or basis for the judgment. Since it clearly shows what kind of church and servant God guarantees and stays with them, it becomes a criterion for clear and precise judgment. Therefore, judging and condemning the church and the servant that the Lord holds in His right hand is no different from judging and condemning the Lord Himself. Now John said, out of his mouth came a sharp two-edged sword. It means the word coming out of his lips is like a sword. Hebrews chapter 4 verse 12 says, For the word of God is living and active and sharper than any two-edged sword, and piercing as far as the division of soul and spirit, of both joints and marrow, and able to judge the thoughts and intentions of the heart. Uh, Friday, uh, and they confessed that they were greatly touched. I really want to see it. How, you know, she is leading that in a prayer meeting. The word from a person who received the authority and power from Father God changes people. It makes people repent and give grace and life and strength. This kind of work should happen. All the servants of God, the workers, you should bring this kind of works. Your word should have the authority and change other people and make other people repent giving life and strength to them. The word that comes out from the Lord's lips can pierce an evil that is hidden inside a deep heart. The word of God pierces like a sword the heart of those who walk in evil. Just as an affected part is cut out by a surgical operation, the sins of untruths are penetrated and cut off by the Word. Once you find the form of evil in you, all you have to do is pierce it by the sword of the Word and cut it out. But there are people who do not get rid of it but keep it. Uh, 
They repeat the procedure of piercing many times, which only makes their lives more painful and difficult. Now, John said his face was like the sun shining in its strength. The face of the Lord shines much brighter than the sun, but since John couldn't describe his face with anything else in the world, he said the Lord's face was like the sun shining in its strength. If we go to heaven, we don't need the sun and the moon because the light of glory from our Father God shines the whole heaven and He covers the whole heaven. The light from the Lord we cannot see. That's why He reduced the brightness of His light. If He reveals the Lord's glory of light, then we cannot see Him. But just as normal people cannot stare at the sun, if they, if they do it, their vision will become blurred or they may lose their eyesight. A sinner cannot look into the faces or eyes of the Lord. Matthew chapter 5 verse 8 says, Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Likewise, only those who are clean and sanctified in their hearts can be given the blessing to see God. The Bible clearly says it. But if I say, I see God, there are some people who, die, who doubt me. Only those who cast off all any kind of form of evil and clean and sanctified, they are the ones who can see Father God. If people are compromising with the world and befriend the world, then they say that they see the Father God, they are lying. Such a man cannot make a communication with our Father God. If they see our Father God, they die. So, when Father God talks to the Israelites after they came out from Egypt, the Israelites only heard the voice of the Father God because they cannot see the Father God's face. But the Bible says, Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Okay? It will happen in heaven as well. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 14 says, Pursue peace with all men, and the sanctification without which no one will see the Lord. You have to make peace with all kinds of men, evil men, good men, the men who are persecuting me, my enemy. You have to make peace with all these kinds of people and the sanctification. Without such things, you cannot see the Lord. This is the word of a Father God and this is the truth. It is the same in this world and also in heaven because our Father God and the Lord is light itself. You cannot, we cannot see our Father God and the Lord with dirty on our body. We have to get rid of every form of evil and get sanctified. Then we can see the Lord, Lord and our Father God. If you come into the Spirit and the Holy Spirit, you'll be able to see our Father God and the Lord. And the people who come into the Spirit are those who made peace with many people. Now there are many people who come into the Holy Spirit already. So when you see those, you can see it. They always make peace with others, and they always try to not to make conflicts with others. They don't have any ill feelings against anybody. 
what they may get angry at the, against the things which is against the will of our Father God, just like our Lord did in the temple of Father God. Just think about the senior deaconess who was called by our Father God. She was the one. She always pursued peace with all people. And she was the one who always pursued the sanctification. After she was called, I could more, I could better bear this word in my heart. I've never heard she is saying, judging, or condemning others. She never criticized anybody because she was gentle. She was goodness itself. She never made complaints against her family, even though her family persecuted her. Rather, she gave testimonies to many people. She never made conflicts with anybody. She always made peace with anybody. So she was quiet. But she was a head of the mission. She was the leader all the time, over the years, without changing, even though she was quiet. Just as mentioned, not everybody will be able to see the Lord just because they go to heaven. Only those who pursue peace with all men and achieve sanctification can be qualified to see the Lord. This is the same in this world. By the way, that out of his mouth came a sharp two-edged sword, and his face was like the sun shining in its strength, symbolizes the Lord's absolute authority that destroys the darkness. The darkness dares not stand against it. Before the authority of the Lord, Christ Jesus, all the forces of the darkness have no choice but to obey and kneel down for the judgment will be made precisely by the word of the Lord. Everything in heavens, in the world, will kneel down before the Lord. Nothing can be left uncovered before Him, and in precise justice, the judgment will be made without any error. Therefore, no one, not even the enemy devil and Satan, can take any legal process or appeal against it. Dear brothers and sisters, our bridegroom, the Lord, is so pure and beautiful without any blemish or flaw. In order to meet with the Lord as a bridegroom, the bride has to adorn herself properly. And the qualification to become a proper bride is quite simple. It is to have the heart cleansed and sanctified and to be faithful to given duties. Only when you have this qualification can you see the Lord, have conversation with the Lord while gazing into the Lord's eyes and be put in His arms. Without these qualifications, you will not be able to see the beautiful Lord. How sorry will you be in heaven if so? The prophet Daniel had spiritual eyes and he knelt down before the host of heaven, the archangel of the heaven. But what if the Lord comes down? Verse 
In the verse 17 of tonight's scripture, Apostle John said, When I saw him, I fell at his feet like a dead man. As I mentioned in the beginning of tonight's scripture, when people say that they saw the Lord in their visions, it means the Lord shows them only the appearance of his human form, not the appearance of his being in the light of glory with the authority equals to that of God the Creator. If the Lord shows His divine authority and dignity to people, people would not be able to look directly into His face, and they become trembling with fear before His authority and dignity. At the time, the Apostle John was seeing the Lord that he would see in heaven. In other words, he was seeing the Lord in His perfect glory. That's why, even though he is appropriately qualified to receive revelation before the Lord, he cannot but feel like a dead man. Furthermore, the Spirit of the Lord itself appears and speaks in front of John. Therefore, John cannot but tremble with fear before the Lord. Now the Lord places His right hand on John and says, Do not be afraid. His right hand symbolizes the power of the Lord. By placing His right hand, He is anointing John. The Lord gives him an extremely precious duty to write down the revelation to awaken the people in the last days. The Lord says, Write the things which you have seen and the things which are and the things which will take place after these things. By placing His hand on John and anointing him, the Lord also gives peace to John so that he can accomplish his duty with a peaceful heart. And the Lord then says to John, I am the first and the last. Just as there was a spiritual meaning when he said that he is the Alpha and the Omega, there is also a spiritual meaning in his saying, I am the first and the last. After he says, I am the first and the last, in the following verse 18, he says, and the living one, and I was dead. He says that he was once dead but resurrected. Therefore, the first means that the Lord is the first fruit of resurrection. After we un unite with the Lord and become one, when we meet the Lord when we return, we will also become the fruit of resurrection. And that I am the last means the second advent of the Lord in the air. It, it is the time when the redemption of human beings comes to an end. Of course, there will be another chance for salvation through the gleaning. But the true human cultivation ends with the second advent of the Lord in the air. This is the end of the age of the Holy Spirit. And it is the last. The four, that the Lord is the first and the last, means that the Lord is the first fruit of the resurrection, and at the same time, by the second advent of the Lord, the redemption of human beings finally comes to an end. The Lord, who is the first fruit of the resurrection, is living forevermore, and He has the keys of death and of Hades. The Lord's possession of the keys of death and Hades means life and death is up to the Lord. The Lord decides whether a soul can be saved or if it will fall into eternal death. Those who accept the Lord as Savior are not bound to the authority of death any longer. They will be resurrected following the Lord who defeated the authority of death and resurrected. Since if you have so much 
thought of flesh. You will have so many idling thoughts. And many fleshly thinking. Then that means you are still in the second level of faith. If you come into the third level of faith, if you make a decision, those things will not come to you. If you come to the third level of faith, all you have to do is just control yourself. If you come to the whole spirit, even though when you try to think of the untruth things, you cannot remember. So those people who come into the Spirit can give worship in spirit and in truth. They will bear the word of Father God in their mind and bear much fruit upon it. They don't have any kind of fleshly thought. All they think of is spiritual think. If you reach the fifth level of faith, even if you try to think of untruth things, you cannot remember. You cannot memorize them. Since so many people of this church come into the Spirit and the Holy Spirit, it's, you know, I feel a little bit comfortable to explain all this. If you come into the Spirit and the Holy Spirit, when you see the things of untruth, you will not remember. You cannot remember. And if you hear the untruth, you will forget as soon as you hear it. But if it's the things of the Spirit, then you will not forget it. And when you uh, listen to the deeds of goodness, then you, tears will roll down from your eyes. Well, you know, but uh, even the fleshly people, you know, you know, shed their tears whenever they see some you know, sad movies. What that means, they have a little bit of goodness, quite much left in their heart. But it's different from the people of the Spirit and the Holy Spirit. They cannot control themselves to shed their tears. Since their heart is of goodness itself, they feel happy and joy whenever they see truth. And it comes as a result of tears rolling down over your face. Let's say you watch TV, and when you see a very touching thing, some people shed their tears, but others, even though they watch the same thing, they do not shed tears. That means their heart is very much different. Since it is made possible by the Lord for souls to be able to be set free from the eternal death, the Lord has the key of death. Also, whether a soul goes to upper grave which is for the saved or to a lower grave which is for not saved is decided by the Lord. Therefore, the Lord also has the key of Hades. Hades will be explained in the Sunday morning service through the lecture on heaven. Since the lecture on the Revelation and lecture on heaven goes along, it's really easy to explain. It's something which I, didn't ex I, I don't explain in the Revelation lecture, 
can be explained in the heaven lecture. By the way, the Lord doesn't have only the key of death and of Hades, but also the key of heaven. Just as John chapter 14 verse 6 says, Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to Father God but through me. The only way to get to heaven is through Jesus Christ. And only the Lord has the key of heaven. So that's why we always pray in the name of the Lord and praise in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. You go to heaven in the name of Jesus Christ. Starting from the next lecture, I will explain about the seven churches. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, when we go to heaven, just the Lord is wearing a long white robe. We will wear fine white linen. I'm wondering, How many people are wearing the robe that our Father God has been prepared for you? If you are given a white robe through this special 28-day prayer meeting, it means you are the man who has the uh, potential to become sanctified. After my wife came back to me when I was a new believer, I was so happy, even though I was poor. Since I was in great debt because of my diseases, I was so poor. But I never failed to give at least the interest. I was so thankful because they, you know, lent me their money to help me. So it was natural for me to pay them back. I've never asked them to forget the money that they lent to me. But I never failed to pay their interest. Even though I cannot pay off the whole debt. I labored. I delivered many other things. I picked up the stones. I did many different kinds of things. But the praise didn't stop from my lips. And there was happiness in my family. So my three daughters didn't have good clothes those days. I believe that the prayer, pre president of prayer center have the uh, pictures of their Uh, their young age. They didn't have good clothes, but they've never thought that they were unfortunate. They never thought that they were poor. Since they grew up very happy, whenever they got some time, they come to church, praise the Lord, and grew up in such a pleasant environment. We never argued. Before I believed in the Lord, we argued every day. But after I accepted the Lord, we never argued. Sometimes I was, I was too poor to pay off my rent, but we were still happy. 
We were happy like that. I believe right before I started this church, in May 1982, if I remember correctly, Father God gave a gift of sanctification to the president of Mom in Prayer Center. So I thought she was sanctified because she was given the gift of sanctification. Because she was never get angry and she was thankful all the time. We lived like that. Whenever I asked her to go to prayer with me, she followed me. Whenever I made the vowed, of, uh, vowed prayers, she followed me too. She never made the conflicts with me. She always followed me. So whenever, even though when I was uh, 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 praying for 100 nights, I've never been late to uh, such uh, 200. I never, uh, I, I've been uh, never late to my vowed prayers. Even though I bowed for uh, the 100 nights prayer. Um, uh, no. When my uh, father in law passed away, I didn't go to his funeral. So when my mother in law passed away, it was the day I was doing a 91 or 92nd day of the 100 day vowed prayers. So I decided to go to uh, my mother in law's funeral. And we tried to give prayers, but we couldn't cry out in our prayers. So I made it, I, I, I made it 100 prayer, I mean, vowed prayer. But I felt something is short because of the funeral of my mother-in-law. So I felt sorry. So I asked, I uh, told her, why don't we do the 100 nights special vowed prayer again? So she obeyed me. She followed my thought. So she always said yes and amen to me. And I was the one who always said yes and amen to my wife. It's the same. Still in today. So when she received the gift of sanctification, I thought she was really sanctified. But since she received such a gift, she under she started to undergo refinements and trials, and I was surprised too. She was the one who always followed the will of Father God and prayed. So I was wondering, where is such an evil coming from the heart of my wife? But later I realized, through the word of Father God, that that was the evil hidden inside the nature of the person. So she struggled to get rid of such an evil. So I felt very sorry whenever I saw her. And she fasted and prayed to get rid of such an evil. And I felt sorry whenever I saw her like that. And now she got rid of every flesh. She realized the flesh is useless. And she became a man of, she became a lady of spirit, which touching the heart of Father God. And when she touches you, you start to repent right away. And she has the authority in her word. Because 
She got rid of every flesh. Sometimes she makes mistake in her lips, but she doesn't have evil left in his heart. She always tried to give out. She always tried to relieve people. When we go to heaven, just the Lord is wearing a long white robe. We will wear fine white linen. As Revelation 19 verse 8 says, It was given to her to clothe herself in fine linen, bright and clean. For the fine linen is the righteous acts of the saints. Only through the righteous deeds from the clean heart can we be qualified to put on the fine linen in heaven? Then, how well are you preparing yourself as the one who is going to wear the fine linen? Just as a bride in a pure white dress enters the wedding hall, whether her bridegroom is waiting for her, when the trumpet blows in the sky and the bridegroom the Lord comes to meet with His brides. Don't you think you also have to stand before Him in pure white fine linen? When I go to open these crusades, so many servants of God and church leaders, doesn't matter if the country is poor or rich, they always feel happy whenever they see a Korean performing team. They are better than angels. Since the Korean performing teams are so beautiful, they compare with the angels from head to toe. They are neat to remind the look of heaven. And they give holy dance. But still, there are many people who do not wear such a clean heart. Some people who say they are praising the Lord wear the blues in. And any kind of shirt, and they start to sing in front of our Lord and God. I feel so sorry whenever I see them. But you've never seen any kind of praise leaders in this church who praise our Father God like that in such a clothes. They always clothe themselves neat and praise the Lord. That's why we received such grace. Wherever we went, all the people were amazed at the dress and the look of our praising team. They always said, the praising ministry, the praising ministry should be like that of our team. So I give thanks to all the performing mission teams. All the uh, group leaders gave special praise, right, this week. And I was wondering why they were wearing a red dress. And then I realized that they, that was the dress uh, they uh, wear to give special praise. So uh, I asked the, one of, the, uh, one of the, uh, the group leaders and how much worth the dress was. And they said it, it, was, uh, it was about like uh, $30. In whole set. 
So it was beautiful. I believe that you can watch it tomorrow again. If we go to heaven, we will wear white, pure robe. And we can see the angels are always clean and pure and white. In hope for that day, may you prepare it finally and diligently through the holy and righteous deeds so that you won't be short of anything to become the Lord's bride. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I pray. You know, the, all the, the uh, opera singers, they wear beautiful dresses, right? But in our praising teams, they, they, they always wear nice. Even the worldly people do the same thing. They do not wear jeans and shirt. All the praising missionaries should realize something if they are listening to this message through the internet. They should realize what kind of attitude and behavior they should show when they praise to our Father God through this message. Let's think of the message and pray together. Hallelujah, Father. Thank you for your grace and love. Father, let your message become life and strength. Please let this message become the bread and let us realize and understand how our Lord is look alike and let that look become our strength and life in our life. Let all the word of this message become bread of life. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. You're going to listen to this lecture on Revelation, right? So uh, if I uh, explain what the word means in the Revelation, you have to memorize and you have to put it in your heart and uh, understand it and realize it. If you forget it, it will be useless. I explained the uh, Alpha and Omega last lecture, right? Can you explain what it is? If you cannot explain what Alpha and Omega means, then you have to listen to the lecture again, and then I explain the what is first and what is the last means in this lecture. Okay? So you have to realize and discern all the things, all right? Don't forget. And remember this whole things and make it your bread of life. I will pray for the sick. Please lay your hands on the sick part of your body or infirmities of your body and receive this prayer. Father God, please lay your hands on these people. Give them power, power, power. Transcending space and time, please work on them. Through satellite and internet, bless all the brothers and sisters of the branch churches and local sanctuaries. Please lay your hands on them. There are many prayer requests. Many people sent their pictures to request prayer. Please lay your hands on these pictures and give them power, power, power. From New York, please lay your hands on these people and answer their prayers. Please work on them. All the mommy members in New York, Keep the Lord's Day holy. Give them true faith. Give them true heart. Let them realize what life is. 
so that they can listen to this word of life so that their spirit and soul get along well and all the family be evangelized and stay in the light. Let them realize what is important. Let them realize how our Father God is with them and how important it is. Father, please bless them. All the mommy members in New York and Washington, bless them, Father. From China, there are prayer requests. Ko Hung Chu. All the cerebral hemorrhage go away. In the name of Jesus Christ, I command all the cere cerebral hemorrhage go away. May the light come, be squished by the fire of the Holy Spirit. All the ruptured disc go away. May the light come. Father, please bless her. From Africa. Jacob Ogurulu, Pastor Jacob Ogurulu requests the prayer. Please lay your hand on him and bless him. Father, please bless him. Please answer his prayers and desires of his heart. He wants to become one with this word of life. Bless him so that he can be greatly used as your instrument for your kingdom. Father, please work on him. Please answer his desires and prayers. Father, please lay your hand on this person who requests this prayer from China. The church is preparing for the anniversary service. Please bring great revival to this church. And give blessing to all the members who are in attendance to attend, who are attending the handkerchief prayer meeting. Father, let there be a great communion service in this church. Dr. Mikhail Mogulis requests request prayer, Father. Please lay your hands on him. Fedorovich Arikin is suffering from cancer. Please cleanse his cancer. Lay your hands on him. All the cancer, go away. Be scorched by the fire of the Holy Spirit, go away. Cancers, go away. Be scorched by the fire of the Holy Spirit and be cleansed. I command in the name of Jesus Christ, all the cancers, go away. Rana Alex requests the prayer, Father. Let her family repent and become united. And let the family reunite. Father, please bless this family. Let all the members of the family repent before you and come to you. May the light come. All the enemy devil and Satan, go away from this family. Father, please bless this family. Many people request the prayer. Give them spiritual understanding. Give Basil good eyesight. The pains go away from Larissa's legs. Scorched by the fire of the Holy Spirit. Please work on her. From Germany, Alexander Yep, pastor, requested prayer. Please lay your hand on this son. All the diabetes, go away. Please lay your hand on this 23-year-old son. All the diabetes, go away. Be scorched by the fire of the Holy Spirit, go away. Father, Pastor Alexander Yep requested prayer for his son. Father, please lay your hands on him and cleanse him. May the light come. Diabetes, go away. Be scourged by the fire of the Holy Spirit. Father, be glorified. Father, thank you. 
from Africa, Pastor Chong Myung Ho. Request the prayer. Father, for the sixth anniversary service for his church, many church leaders and high ranking officials come to his church. Please give him power. Pastor Sangte Kim, Pastor Yohan Kim, and Pastor Chu Wan Lee went to Nairobi Mamin Church, Kenya. Father, please be with them. May the light come. Father, bless its anniversary service. I give you a great blessing to all the guests. Father, thank you. Bless all the members of this church from head to toe. Scorch every disease by the fire of the Holy Spirit from their body and intestines. Father, please answer their prayers and desires of their hearts. May the light come. Receive the fullness of the Holy Spirit. Father, please bless them. Give them spiritual and physical blessing. Be with us in the second half of this service. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. Amen.